On today's Two Minute Tuesday, we're gonna talk about one of the most underutilized tools in the shop, a card scraper. Uh, it's normally where we'd run an intro, but unfortunately I broke the USB port on our hard drive reaching for a sandwich. So let's just throw two minutes on the clock and come on into the bench. Card scrapers are cheap, inexpensive, and they are awesome. This is the one I keep in my apron at all times. Uh, they come in handy all the time. In fact, on Sunday, we released this video about a honing guide sharpening vise for card scrapers that works great, but you really don't need anything fancy to get into them. Just a burnisher, which could be uh, like this carbide burnisher, which I have linked below that is awesome, or it could be just an old hardened screwdriver or an old drill bit. Uh, anything that is harder than the card scraper will work great. This is typically the kit that most people sell. It's about like eight bucks for the three card scrapers. Uh, there's a lot of specialty ones. You can get ones that have different size curves in them, which to be honest, I don't think I've used these more than once or twice in the last five years. However, they do come in handy every now and then. Now, when you use a card scraper, and again, I'm not gonna talk about sharpening because I just released a video on Sunday, and then I also have another video. They're both linked up here in the uh, upper right-hand corner of your screen, uh, as well as a pinned comment and description. Uh, they are great sharpening how-tos. Uh, I'm gonna talk about use today. So let me show you about places where card scrapers are super helpful. Now, a card scraper should be compared to a hand plane rather than a scraper because it is creating shavings. And if you're just purely getting dust, you need to resharpen your card scraper. You should be getting shaving-like material. Sometimes you get a little bit of dust, but you have created a microscopic hook on the end of your scraper that looks like this if you are doing it correctly. And one of the places that I really love card scrapers is small pieces. Uh, something that is thinner than your sander, because what happens with a sander, if you try and sand this, a lot of times you'll round over the edges or give it a hump in the middle because the pad on your sander is slightly padded, and so it's gonna create a slight concave in your sander when you're sanding. And what you wanna do is grab it with your thumbs on the back, and you don't wanna push super fast because this is gonna heat up. It can kill the temper on your metal as well as burn your thumbs, and you just wanna put a slight bend in it, nothing too extreme, and the less bend you put in it, the better finish across the piece you're gonna get and you wanna hold your card scraper at about a 10 to 30 degree angle. And you can adjust it as you go to find that spot where you're getting shavings. But I drew some pencil on here to show you how fast this works. Look at that, one scrape all the way across the piece and I have a nice finish. Now I would come back and hit this with 220 by hand. I wouldn't use my sander, but very quickly we're just getting perfect shavings. And if you wanna see how to get great shavings like this, you can watch those two sharpening videos I have linked here in the corner. Now, not only is it great for small pieces, but places where I'll use it without sandpaper are things like bevels and concaves. All right, so things like this bevel, like the mallet I made for Vlad, this is great. And a lot of times uh, you can hold it in one hand and pull towards you and just get a quick, nice finish, or, you know, on something like this, I probably wouldn't bend too much. I'd just kind of do it nice and lightly. What that bend is for is it keeps the corners from digging into your work. And I usually take a file and round those corners off anyways. You can just quickly get a finish ready surface on a chamfer and you're ready to put finish on it. Same thing with like a round over. Um, you can take something like this round over here and you can use a standard card that comes in the set and sand that off or you can get one of these ones and find the right size curvature for your round over. They also work great in tough tear out situations, but either way, they work incredible. Now let's talk about the different kinds of card scrapers. Now when it comes to card scrapers, I keep this one in my vest. That's 99% of the card scraping I do. Very rarely will I pick up what's called a gooseneck scraper. It has different curves, uh, both interior and exterior curves on it that you can use to get a good finish. As far as sharpening goes, these aren't any different than a regular card scraper. You just kind of need to go around them and I'll just put it in my vise and slowly rotate it and just keep burnishing it at a five degree angle around the edge. Um, there's one of these guys which comes in the three-piece kit I have linked below. Uh, it has an exterior and an interior curve. Concave and convex, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and these work great, just careful of these corners because those will poke you and dig into your work. But these also work great because they can work as a card scraper as well. Um, and this curve is great for getting finishes on areas that are tough to sand uh, and are tough to reach. So, and then you get into kind of some specialty shapes that have uh, different size roundovers for concave and 
convex roundovers. Uh, actually, it's called a cove bit. Man, I am not good at my circular geometry terms. But for eight bucks, you can get a three piece set that is, I think these three, and they work great. It's a great investment. I think the carbide burnisher, which works way better than the uh, hardened steel one, I think that's like 16, 17 bucks if you wanna invest in that. Otherwise you can use an old screwdriver. But these are one of those things that just come in handy as long as you keep it on your person or on your bench. They really, really work well. And again, you just wanna to remember to not heat up your piece. And then if you're getting dust, in fact, I can tell this side needs to be sharpened because look at this this finish, I'm getting dust, but this side is giving me perfect shavings that William Walker would be jealous of. Guys, thanks for watching. If you wanna support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store, get yourself an apron, a stop blocker, a dovetail jig. Stay safe in the shop, have a wonderful day.